You're going to start by degassing the gun. This gun is already degassed, so we're going to remove the bottle and the barrel. Remove the barrel, you just need a three millimeter Allen wrench. Remove that grip screw here. Remove the barrel from the gun. For the scope rail, you need a four millimeter Allen wrench and a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. And for the cheek piece, you'll remove the four two and a half millimeter Allen wrench screws. At this point, I would take off the valve adjuster. There will be a spring underneath this if it's a power plenum, if it's a X or pre-power plenum, there will not be a spring under here. Use an 11 millimeter box end wrench to remove the stem. you want two vice grips or a set of pliers or something to be able to remove this. This is the C1 or hammer seat. You want to clamp on to the rod so it doesn't spin. And clamp on to the C1 hat. We can remove that. Sometimes these are Loctited on there. You may need to use heat. Uh, melt that Loctite. That just comes off and exposes the rod. You will reuse the C1 hammer seat. At this point, we'll take off the top rail here and remove those screws. Just lift straight up. I just like to leave all the screws in place and then that, you know where to put them back at. With this, you can just lift off the caulking block, lift it up, slide it back and remove it from the gun. We have a four millimeter Allen head screw here. So we're going to loosen, you do not need to remove, but just at least loosen it so that the stem of the plenum can be taken out. Sometimes it can be very tight. Just go slow, come right out. At this point we're going to separate the trigger block from the power plenum and rear block. There's two O-rings in here. Just come out, comes out as an assembly. I'm going to take this, take your black cover off if you have it on your gauge. I've already loosened this gauge. You may need a, a crescent wrench or a socket that will fit. Loosen that, take that all the way out. That will be reused also. Then we're going to remove these four two and a half millimeter Allen wrench screws. Before you lift this off, there is a spring under here and the lever that moves, you don't want to lose them. So With this, then just lift this straight off. This will also be reused. And now the whole old power plenum rear block, valve, everything has been removed. All right, for the reassembly, you've got three O-rings 
that you want to make sure are in place inside the large hole. There's one in the front, one in the back, one right in the middle. Want to make sure those are all in. They look like they're all seated. There is also one up in here in the barrel housing. Make sure that's in. Make sure there's there is nothing hanging up or you know sharp or anything. Then you'll insert your supplied X ring for your gauge into this hole. We've already done that for you. There is also an O ring on the inside of the power plenum itself, right in here. You want to make sure that's in place and your screw is in the power plenum. This actually retains your valve house into the power plenum. We used Trident Lube, uh, just a silicone lube to put on the outside of the valve house so that the O-ring seal up good. You're going to insert it through the, through the big hole out the small hole. There's a lip that that'll actually shoulder up against. Comes out, you're just gonna pull all the way out till it stops. You're gonna align the screw with the flat. There is a, a hole in here for the screw to line up with. Use a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Run the screw in until it stops and make sure the valve house does not turn. So if you turn it back and forth, one that's just barely touching, you can fill it inside the hole. Go ahead and tighten it down. Now at this point, we'll add a little more of the lubricant onto the stem, the valve house here, and insert this into the power block. Now there are two holes. This is your center one for the gauge. This is the bolt that holds the valve house into the block. Make sure the valve house uh, step is also pointed towards the back Then just go ahead and insert it might need to wiggle it back and forth to get it started Once it's in there you can look through the hole you can see the flat You're gonna take your supplied uh, Screw here to, to tighten it down That's a four millimeter to tighten it down with you don't need to go super tight, just snug. And now we're going to reassemble our back part of the gun. We're going to put our rear plate and screws. This is your mag plate. Reinstall these 2.5 millimeter screws. I like to get them started before I tighten anything down. Make sure everything's aligned. With this, you do not need to go super tight, just snug this point make sure everything's aligned around it wipe in wipe off any excess grease from your fingers or assembling and make sure that's that is lined up there and right here this will be recessed just a little bit and now we want to put the gauge back in go ahead and in you're going to be re reusing your gauge unless you upgrade at the same time take that down till Fill it snug and then take your wrench and just try to time that about there. This one is actually getting tight before it times straight up. This is different depth so you may end up timing your, your gauge a little bit differently and if you over tighten this the gauge may not read. If that happens just loosen the gauge slightly that'll allow air to come through and be able to read. All right, this is your trigger block. We're gonna be reusing the, the spring, the guide, and the hammer in this gun. We'll just make sure that's in there. Gonna grab our stem. There are two O-rings on the outside here. Make sure there's nothing in there. There's also one around the outside here. Inside, there are two O-rings. There is a white one that goes in first, and then a black one that will slide in there if you need to install those or change them, I just use an Allen wrench and push them down into place with some lubricant on them. And then we just inspect for any defects, no defects. Uh, and then this is gonna be screwing into here. So let's put this into the action. 
want to make sure all these o-rings are nice and lubed up so that they slide into the action properly thing I want to mention is on the stem there is a divot here this is your alignment divot it is going to be aligned in this slot here that'll be centered up in there that's so you know that it's timed correctly so we'll just insert this in might have to add some pressure but make sure you don't just slam it in there okay it's probably pretty hard to see but the alignment divot is up this is flush here now you'll take your four millimeter allen wrench tighten this down doesn't need to be crazy tight but pretty snug so that puts the stem back into the trigger half trigger block now you'll take your valve stem valve rod whatever you want to call it you want to inspect this black piece right here which is your valve seat um, and make sure there's nothing damaged on there which this one looks clean check this o-ring right here make sure it's in place and at this point add a little lubricant to that and a little bit of lubricant to the upper portion of the rod because there are two o-rings it's going to be passing through let's go ahead and insert that from the back you're going to be going through that center hole there you know, fill go through the o-rings it'll line up come through the front of the gun I like to take it out about there make sure everything's moving smooth and at this point we will lube up this rear o-ring so that we have plenty of sealing surface here so now you're going to take this your two halves we've got this fully assembled and this is assembled enough to the point that we can assemble it you're going to start the threads make sure not to cross thread it and if this turns just like ours did we're gonna take it off and realign our our hole right there this is why I say don't don't over torque it but give it some give it some tension you take it till it stops turning just gently and as you can tell, it's out of time. Instead of going past, we're gonna back it off and loose, loosen it up a little bit across the length, which is fine. So now at this point, we can go ahead and install our C1 or our hammer seat. We like to use a little bit of blue Loctite. Don't use red, um, no need for the red, but a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads. And just wipe that in there. You don't want this coming off that can affect your tune or whatever you just want to make sure this is cleared go ahead and start it by hand make sure that you don't cross thread it thread it on until it gets kind of tight and take your pliers whatever you're using to hold your stem clamp it on there and you're going to take your second ones clamp it on there make sure not to go too tight to damage it but you want it tight enough to hold it you're going to take it all the way down until it stops. Just give it a little snug there. Go ahead and remove your, remove your uh, pliers. Then you want to make sure this seats all the way in. So it comes to a hard stop. Hammer turned down. You'll want to measure from the face of the trigger block to the end of the stem. You want to be about six millimeters. So that's right in right within spec so anywhere from right around six to six and a half millimeters from this face to here make sure that's seated we'll take this new stem we'll thread that into the action you'll want to use a box end just so that you don't crush it this is hollow it's fairly soft just come up with just a little bit of tension you'll take your newly supplied spring this is a upgrade for the power the power block and start your adjuster I like to take it down to about the fourth line here that's a good starting point for most tunes now we'll be putting our mk2 caulking block in you're gonna align the pin this pin with the hole in this arm if you go to install it and it won't seat down, look down and make sure your hammer is out of the way. So it's back just a little bit. 
install it, make sure it moves a little bit. Good there. Now we're going to install the backbone that still has its screws already in place. Gonna line that up, just kind of wiggle it into place. And then these are two and a half millimeter screws. Just get them started. Get all the screws started before you tighten anything down. This will keep the alignment good. On this front block, you want to make sure this is smooth all the way down. You can feel that there's nothing, neither one of the parts are sticking out. Go ahead and tighten them down just a little bit. Same on the back right here. Tighten them down. If you're using a torque wrench, go to about 10 inch pounds. You don't want to strip these out. You just want to make sure everything's aligned still. You can still move this rear block a little bit if you need. Tighten them down. So this is fully assembled at this point. You can actually screw your bottle on, check and make sure everything's sealed up. There should be no leaks in the gun. Uh, at that point, you can put your barrel on and we'll put the top rail and cheek piece back on. With the top rail, you're, I like to start the four millimeter first. Take it down till it just snug. And then you wanna check the alignment along here to make sure it's squared up. And then just give it a little tighten. Take the these two 2.5 millimeter bolts down snug. Again, about 10 inch pounds on these and 18 or so on this front one because this actually carries your scope. You don't want that moving around. Then you'll reinstall your cheek piece. Tighten these down. These just need to be snug. There's no torque. You don't need to add a lot of torque here. It's not carrying anything just holding that piece in place. We're going to screw on our bottle here. When you first air it up you will hear air coming through the back block. Just give it a second because it has to reseal everything with the high pressure air that's in here. Go ahead and screw that on. We hear no leaks. Make sure your bottle's in place. Then go ahead and insert your barrel. The kit should come with a new grub screw for your barrel, which is a three millimeter. Go ahead and insert that into the block. Tighten it down. And now it's ready for tuning.